Today we have a special guest speaker. Uh, Sam Paddock is a former student from Valley Christian Church. He was came to youth group here for many years, and now he actually is living during the school year up at Boise Bible College, um, going to school there. He just finished his sophomore year, okay, sophomore year, and this summer he'll be doing an internship up in Oregon. So we had a small window where he was back in town. We asked him to preach, and he agreed, and so I'm excited to hear what God has taught him and what God has given him the word to say to us. So let's go ahead and uh, take a second and pray for Sam, and then he'll come up here and get started. Pray with me, please. Lord, thank you for bringing Sam here this morning to listen, um, or for us to listen to, to be able to hear the word, the message that you've given him to bring to us. Uh, open our hearts, give us ears to hear what you have to say, and let um, you, your message flow through Sam. Give him peace and a sense of calmness as he's up here, Lord. You know, we just pray this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Uh, my name is Sam Paddock. I started attending here at Valley Christian Church my sophomore year of high school. Uh, I attended in the youth program, and then after I graduated high school, I stayed and helped in the youth group for quite a few years and have now just finished up my sophomore year at Boise Bible College. And a big part of that is all thanks to you guys here and your wonderful support of me and my scholarship up to college. I don't think I'd be able to be at Bible College without the support of this church. So I want to do a quick thank you guys for that. I grew up going to church. I started at about six years old. Um, and by the time I was about 14 years old, I was the only person in my family who was attending church regularly, actually. So with my eyes fixed on Jesus, I was so excited to be spending the rest of my life serving him. Now, what a lot of people may not know, though, is that while I attended here, I was starting to lead a double life. At about 15 years old, I started to struggle with alcohol. And so I spent most of my time uh, being able to come to church and hiding my deep, dark sin and living a life of alcoholism. I started drinking pretty regularly on the weekends, and then it moved sometimes to during the week until it came to a point where I could not go to bed without drinking alcohol. Finally, I had hit my lowest point. I spent an entire month where if I wasn't here at the church or at my job, I spent it drunk. I actually remember sitting here in this very room listening to Tom Weaver, who many of you may know. He comes with Rock Solid Ministry to come preach here and do a revival. Uh, I was sitting here listening to him preach on the disqualified priest from Leviticus 10, and I felt God's conviction on my heart that if I didn't change, that I knew I would be disqualified myself. When I look back at this time of my life, I'm reminded of the story of Jesus and Peter walking on water. Much like Peter in the story, I took my eyes off Jesus and focused on the world around me and lost sight of what lost sight of who I was supposed to follow. And while I may not have been drowning in the Sea of Galilee, I was certainly drowning in a bottle. But Jesus reached out his hand, and despite how long it took me to grab it, I'm sure glad I did. So now that we've got to hear a little bit about my personal life, let's look at some scripture. So today we're going to be looking at Matthew 14, 22 through 33. So with this, we start on Matthew 22. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, where he dismissed the crowds. Uh, let me also point out that this is right, uh, they are on the Sea of Galilee. And so when he's saying he put them out on the boat, he's putting them on the boat of the Sea of Galilee and sends them out. So he sends them out and he says, it says, after he dismissed the crowd, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat by this time was a long way. From the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid is a term that we kind of hear a lot in Scripture. Uh, we hear it here, and we hear it during many accounts where... 
an angel appears because even though we like to think of angels as the little tiny naked babies with wings, angels can be terrifying. They're, you know, the speakers of God. And so it's, I think it's interesting that we as humans are just so scared of everything that we don't understand. And with this story, they don't understand seeing someone out on the water. Uh, it was believed that the Sea of Galilee at the time was haunted by the spirits of dead fishermen. With how many storms they had, it wasn't an uncommon superstition to believe it was a ghost. And at this point, there had never been talk of something like this with Jesus about being able to walk on water. And so while, yes, there was a lack of faith, it wasn't something that they necessarily should have known to be Jesus. So he says to them, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come out on the water. So we see Peter, and he looks at all of this, and he goes, okay, I, I trust my Lord. Jesus, is the, is the, if this is you, call me out, and I'll be able to come out to you. Jesus said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. And when he was sinking, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. So that's the overview of the scripture that we're going to be looking at. And so now I kind of want to break down a few of these different steps in the process of the story. And the first one is going to be stepping out in faith. We see Peter look to Jesus and calling out to him, saying that if it's truly him, call him out onto the water, and Jesus does so. In an instant, Peter gives up his comfort to step out in faith. He walks out onto the water to follow Christ. As humans, we don't want to take risks. We like to be comfortable. For me, being comfortable means that I'm curled up in bed with a nice soft blanket and the green teddy bear that I've had since I was three years old that my grandma gave me because I kept annoying her about it until she gave it to me. It was just the kind of kid that I was. But other times, comfort can look like not wanting to talk to the person that God's calling you to in the grocery store. You're in line and you hear someone talking about having a bad day or you just know that God's putting it on your heart to talk to them and you think to yourself, mm, no, God, someone else will handle this. You can send someone else there. We're not wanting to step out of that comfort zone. Or maybe the church is asking for you to volunteer for a position. Maybe it's to help Jared in the youth group or join the worship team. And, you know, you think that God might be calling you there, but you just don't know if you can take time out on your Wednesday nights or you don't know if you can really have the energy to do that. So you kind of sit there. In this moment, we need to be stepping out in faith and trusting in God. When we trust in Jesus, stepping out in faith becomes so much easier. The next point is don't take your eyes off Jesus. As Peter is walking out onto the water towards Jesus, his gaze starts to drift away from Jesus and onto the scene around him. He sees the waves and becomes scared, and Peter starts to sink. Peter's distractions caused him to lose focus of what is truly important. In this, as he has a focus and he understands what's going on. But the moment that he takes his eyes off of Jesus, the moment that he steps out and looks at everything else and starts focusing on everything else in his life that's happening, he starts to sink. And I think that we often feel that same way. We feel like everything's going good, and once we think everything's okay, we kind of take a break from doing our morning devotionals, or we don't focus on God as much as we should be, and that's when things start to fall apart. When taking our focus off of Jesus, we start to fall to the world around us. The third point that I have is peace comes from the presence of Jesus, not the absence of a storm. So something that really sticks out to me is that Jesus didn't calm the storm before calling Peter out onto the water with him. 
Jesus knows that as long as Peter focuses on him, that Peter will be okay. This is a perfect example of looking to Jesus in, hard art in hardships and pain. That despite having pain in our lives, we can still have joy when we have Jesus at the center. Even as Peter starts to sink, he cries out to Jesus saying, Lord, save me. We see that even though he starts to fall, Jesus is there despite the distractions, despite the fear, and despite the storms in our life. Like I said earlier in my sermon at the very beginning, I talked about when I w myself had started to drown. I'd talked about coming and listening to a sermon and at that point, that was when I knew in my life that I had to call to Jesus to save me. And it took a long time for me to uh, fully get to where I am now. At, I was 19 years old when I first had that realization and it was something that I continued to struggle with for many months. Uh, working here at the church with Malcolm on it and just working in my daily devotional and relationship with God. It's just something that even though there was that level of fear, I knew that if I continued to walk and dwell with Christ that everything would end up being okay. Even in our lack of faith, Jesus is still there to catch us. He caught Peter, he caught me, and he can catch you too. My final point, oh, I missed that one. So, not the absence of storm. That's what I was talking about a minute ago. But my final point is to respond in faith. At the end of this story, Jesus and Peter climb back into the boat with the rest of the disciples. We see the remaining disciples acknowledging Jesus as Lord and worship him for what he has done. As Christians, we do not always respond in this way. We should be worshiping God for all he does, whether it's big or small. Jesus deserves worship for everything. And I think Peter's gonna, or not Peter, Jared, I'm gonna pray and then Jared's gonna come up. Dear Lord, uh, thank you for this wonderful time together. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share with this wonderful congregation today. I just pray that uh, as I spoke that they heard something, Lord, and that you got to speak through me today. I just pray a wonderful blessing on all of them and the rest of their week. In Jesus' name.